look at it. Bat poo. So in this video, I've compiled a list of Bell 10 questions that I've been asked over the last 12 months. Would you recommend buying the ultimate Bell tent or the Pro tent? If you had to do again, would you get a four meter or a five meter size Bell tent? Do you need a ground sheet? All right, do you use a flyer or a protector for the Bell tent? Firstly, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so appreciative of everyone's support, views, and likes about this epic bell tan over the last 12 months. <coughs> Alright, so I just watched myself and I'm gonna show you. In Sydney at the moment, we're in lockdown, hence the hat, because my hair is a mess. And. All right, it all started with these two videos 12 months ago, and since then, there have been a lot of venturers who reached out and asked us a lot of questions because they want to go on their amazing adventures too. If you're new here, my name is Anthony, and this is what the Dad Venture is about trying new things and sharing the love the good, the bad, and the comical. So, over the last year, I've been asked a lot of questions around our trip to the snow, where we camped on the snow in negative seven degrees with a three-year-old in a bell tent. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> and we got a lot of questions on our bell tent review video as well. So in this video, I've compiled a list of bell tent questions that I've been asked over the last 12 months. I'm going to call this video Bell Tent Questions Answered 2021. Hopefully the answers here will help more Bell 10 adventurers out there. These have been our experiences, our adventures, what worked for us. We are nowhere at all Bell 10 experts and we don't know it all. Like everyone watching this, we did our research, we tried it, and we're just sharing our results. If you know a better way, please, please, share it below so we can all can learn. So we all can learn. So we all can learn. This is a common question that I get asked a lot. Would you recommend buying the Ultimate Bell Tent or the Protec Bell Tent? Firstly, both of these models are canvas camp bell tents. Uh, here are the differences. The Protec model has a thicker cotton canvas material all around. The ground sheet's also thicker as well. Due to the thickness, the Protec weighs in like at 29 kilos and the Ultimate weighs in about 24 kilos. Five kilos more. But the biggest difference, the biggest difference between both of them is that the Protec has a double wall, a zip mesh wall and a canvas wall. So you can roll up the canvas wall in summer and have the nice outside breeze come through, but keeping all the bugs out. I have the ultimate model because the Protec model was in stock when I needed it. If I did it again, I would definitely go the Protec just because of the double wall. So if you had to do it again, would you get a four meter or a five meter size bell tent? Well, I have a four meter bell tent. Would I get a five meter bell tent? Hmm, yes I would. For sure, here's my reason. I have a four year old. <laughs> she needs a space, we need our space, but let me show you how much room there is. This here is a double mattress, 2 meters by 1.5 meters. I think the 4 meters is perfect for a couple or you and a mate or two before it feels a bit squishy. Remember you have to add in a camp stove and that generally takes up a bit of room. I also leave the front entrance free so it's easy access. Mind you, if you consider the 5 meter bell tent, it's much heavier. It's like 40 kilos compared to your the 24, your 29 kilos. But you do get a higher door, as in the height of the door is higher in the five meter bell tent, which is 1.7 meters, whereas on the four meters is 1.5. I'm 1.8. I know that there are different brands out there that has a higher entrance for your four meter bell tents, so put that into your consideration. What camp stove mat am I using? So there is a heat proof fire mat designed especially for camp stoves. I didn't use it because after reading some online forums, I end up getting a fire resistant barbecue mat. It's about a third or a quarter of the price. Every time I fire this little guy up, I don't feel any heat in the fire mat or the ground sheet. However, I am upgrading it now. Um, I do have a toy coming and it is very, 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 very exciting. <laughs> Can't wait. Ooh, 
Right, look how big it is compared to the child. Woo! Can't wait. A big shout out to a gentleman named Keith. He mentioned that he loved my Godzilla moment in my first review. Mate, I do too. Thank you. <laughs> On a side note, if you want to see the bell tent being amazing, there is a couple in Sweden who has put their bell tent on a floating raft and they travel around the lake. It is an amazing setup. Like, check out their story. It's amping it up. By the way, if you found this video helpful so far, please help us by hitting that like button. It does help get this video out to other bell tent adventures as well, which will help more people go on more adventures. So we thank you. Let's move on. Do you need a ground sheet? Good question. I've been told by some that bell tent ground sheet will create some moisture if you don't have a protective ground sheet under it, especially on the snow or when it rains. From our experience, we don't use a ground sheet and we haven't experienced that personally. Originally, I did want to get a ground sheet to protect my bell tent ground sheet. How many times have I said ground sheet? Ground sheet. Through all the adventures we've had, the bell tent ground sheet has been really tough. Like, we haven't had any moisture problems. The only problem that we've had, and it's not really a problem, is that the ground sheet gets really cold. Like, really cold. Which is why you often see us with random pieces of carpet and picnic blankets on the floor. It makes a massive difference by layering it. Ooh, so I saw a review recently where a bell tent company has designed a fitted matting that you can put on the ground. Yes! Uh, inside the tent, it's, it's like carpet. Now that's glamping. But I can't find the link for the life of me. But if you know who it is, let me know below and my family will appreciate it. <laughs> Alright, do you use a flyer or a protector for the bell tent? That is a good question. The answer is no, but there's a reason. Since the last review video, I haven't bought myself a protector yet because of the mistake that I made. Let me show you. So this is the flu that I've added to the roof to my camp stove and that's the problem. I can't put a protector on it because, well, the flu is protruding out. Not to mention, obviously, the chimney as well. I'm still trying to find a workaround, but in retrospect, I should have found a camp stove that the chimney, instead of going upwards, it goes sideways into the side wall. Which means I can use the protector and I can use the camp stove. Oh, and while I'm talking about this, just to note the exit flue here. Because it's on the roof, in summer, when I don't use the camp stove, this is exposed. So generally I put a tennis ball in there. Yep, a tennis ball. But if I had it in the side wall exit, it would be less in your eye. And you could use the protector. Again, I'm still trying to find a workaround with what I've done, but if you have a solution, let me know and thank you in advance. I'm just hiding from the wind. If there are any questions that you want to know and that we haven't answered yet, please let us know below. We'll answer it as much as we can. By the way, if you want to know more about the original review video, that's just up here. I don't know why I looked. <laughs> and this is our adventure video at Mount Kosciuszko in a bell stand. Oh, and, and. Firstly, both of, firstly, both. No, 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 no. Blah, 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 blah. So... Blah, blah.